To start off, we have Andy Anderson versus John Hess. John Hess is a huge man at 6'7 and 285 pounds, while Andy Anderson is 5'5 five five and 238 pounds. Not a small man by any means, but just nowhere near as large. John Hess pr pretty much runs at Andy the second that the fight starts and throws a ridiculous flurry. Not a lot of technique to it, but a lot of them land, and at that size, they have power behind them. It's not so much so that Andy, a striker, goes for the takedown. He tries a power double, but it's stuffed by John, and then he eats a few 12 to 6 elbows to the ribs for his trouble. John creates some space and lands a right hand that drops Andy. John drops on top of him, but Andy uses that momentum and intelligently shifts it so he can sweep John and get on top. This is all in about 30 seconds, mind you, and now Andy is in John's guard. He's landing some punches, knocking out John's mouthpiece, and John tries to create some space by extending his legs, but Anderson just throws him aside and is now inside control. Hess gets and uses an underhook to get up, and then he rushes Anderson again. It's evident that Anderson wants no part of Hess on the feet. They clinch and Hess lands some uppercuts and a right hook, but nothing huge, and they break. Hess throws and lands two horrible, horrible teeps, and then they clinch again. John grabs a single collar necktie and throws some rights, one of which drops Anderson. He follows up with some knees to the body, one knee to the head, and that ends the fight. At 123, John Hess wins by TKO. However, he did get fined $2,000 for eye gouging, and he had to withdraw from the competition with a hand injury, likely from one of the many punches to the head of Andy Anderson. Second fight of the tournament is Tom Medina versus Larry Kirikin. Medina goes for a double leg, but it's defended, so he switches it to a single and gets him down almost right away. Kirikin grabs an arm out guillotine on Medina, but he doesn't defend. Instead, he goes for body punches. My guess is because it looks like a weak guillotine and not something that's going to tap him. Eventually, Medina does defend it and gets out right away. Follows it with some attempt to ground a pound, but can't get some off, so he headbutts Kiritin. However, they have no real power behind them. At around two minutes in, Medina moves to half guard and Kiritin tries to recapture that guillotine. Kiritin doesn't know how to hold position, so Medina steps right over his leg and goes to side control. If he wanted, he could probably go for a Von Flu choke, however, he probably doesn't know how to apply one, as it hasn't been created yet. Kiritin regains half guard because Medina also is well adept at maintaining positions. Medina starts throwing leg punches to loosen the legs of Kiritin, and it works, so he regains side control. Medina places his forearm on the throat of Kiritin. Kiritin recaptures Medina's leg and gets half guard yet again, but then moments later taps out to the choke, which is why the official record titles a forearm choke. Tom Medina wins by submission at 2.55. Next we have Oleg Taktarov vs. Ernest Verdicio. In this fight, I think they set up Taktarov to win as he is a Sambo champion and Jiu Jitsu champion and he's fighting someone who has openly admitted that he's not good on the ground. They know that Taktarov is good, and so I think they're setting him up to look strong to begin with, so they can give him an opponent that plays it to how he fights. The fight starts, and Verdicia opens with a right hand, then a jab cross. I believe he's using palm strike so he doesn't break his hands like previous fighters have. Oleg ducks under potential further damage. Grabs Verdicia's left arm, and Oleg decides to go to his back and grab half guard rather than eating possible knees. Taktarov immediately gains full guard, but keeps it open. Verdicia lands some right hands and headbutt, but because Taktarov is doing such a good job of keeping him in tight, they don't have a lot of power on them. Verdicia turns to try and get around Taktarov's butterfly, but Taktarov turns with him until his legs are at the cage which he uses to threaten with a Namba, but he doesn't secure it and Verdicia gets out. However, in doing so, Verdicia gives Oleg his leg. 
Ellie decides to get Butterfly Guard instead so he doesn't risk the damage one can get when going for a light submission. Taktara stops waiting for Vidicia to shift his weight forward and instead traps one leg and sweeps him with one butterfly. He immediately cuts into side control and submits Vidicia with what looks like a can opener. The official submission on the Wikipedia lists it as a choke though. Oleg wins at 2.23 by submission. The last fight of the opening round is Dan Seven vs Joe Charles. Dan takes Joe Charles to the ground immediately, just grabs him by the hips and double legs him. Joe Charles attempts an arm and guillotine, but doesn't get it. Dan moves right into side control and secures the head of Joe Charles, but Joe Charles does the same thing and tries to secure the head of Dan Seven. Joe does a good job of not getting flattened out and remaining on his side so that he can continue to move and maneuver, but Dan keeps him against the cage fence to remove that from playing. Dan lands a good knee to the head of Joe and minimal ground and pound, but Joe uses this opportunity to gain guard. Joe attempts an armbar but isn't able to get it, and Dan is now out of Joe Charles' guard, but now he unintentionally put himself in triangle setup. If Joe Charles had the jiu-jitsu knowledge, he might have been able to submit Danny, but he didn't, so Dan was able to just throw his legs aside with little effort and try and get some ground and pound. Joe rolls over to, to his knees to get off his back and create some space between him and Dan, but Dan follows, takes his back, and secures a rear naked choke while Joe is getting up. Dan wins via rear naked choke at 138 in a good and fast-paced fight.